Hey guys, this is JH. Welcome to practice too. <laughs> and we're really into summer now, guys. It's uh, it's boiling here today. <clears throat> Absolutely boiling here today. Just like to say, I uh, uh, give some good wishes to uh, one of our one of our uh, channel like instructors in the US. Uh, big Steve Walters. Steve's just had a knee reconstruction and it's going to be laid up for a while. And Steve is the epitome of enthusiasm when it comes to, to channel lock and just golf per se. So it's going to be brutal for him <laughs> uh, to be away from golf for a while. But I guess in, in one way, uh, Steve, it's, it's an opportune time for you because the weather up there, this time of the year, uh, you usually have a bit of a shutdown anyway, buddy, so maybe it's an opportune time. But get well, mate, and make sure your rehab is done correctly. Don't try and get back too early. Too much good stuff going on in the new year to uh, to uh, create any problems for yourself. So get well quick, buddy, and uh, you won't know yourself with a new uh, lead knee. Because the lead knee is what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, buddy, get well. Okay guys, so uh, just to mention then I'm going to talk about the lead knee today and the role the lead knee plays in channel lock. Guys, it's a buttressing mechanism in that what I want to do with the trail side is drive the trail, the, the mass and the pressure down the trail side there and I want to push back off the lead side into the trail side. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to form this type of coalition um, and the coming together of forces one one from this trail side and one from this lead side so that they're coming in and meeting here like like two 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 arms of a river coming in and just colliding in here the massive force here and and that's what it is guys it's that that front lead leg forcing back this way here into that trail leg here and i very much want to feel then I'm over here, guys. Do I feel like I'm backing away when I hit it well? Yeah, I feel like I'm backing away when I hit it really well. Backing away, I feel like that. That's the advantage for me there, guys, is that it gives my lead arm a really good chance to release. And it gives my trail arm a chance to elongate. If you're forward here like that, all this gets jammed up. So, what are you saying, JH? All right, I'm saying that the feeling very predominantly is that at impact, I'm driving this way, here. If I can push back off that lead side into that trail side and feel like I'm pushing my, my trail vertical axis that way, that's how I want to feel. And, and, and conventional instructors would say you're nuts, JH. Why would you want the mass going that way? Well, I want the mass going that way to form a buttressing effect and support mechanism for the mass and the, the power and the propulsion of the arms going forward. That's what I want it to. I, if I take the mass forward, guys, there's nothing for the mass, the operative mass, the real important mass, which is the arms and the club head. There's nothing to support that mass going away. Yet that mass can take you with it. Now, if I'm going to throw something, I'm going to throw something, I'm invariably back here. A baseball batter is invariably back here, guys. He hears. There's a lot of baseball batting in this. They're on a horizontal plane, we're on an inclined plane. That's really the difference. Get into the trail side here, and then and then we just we just fire the arms here. Fire the arms. Okay. The baseball batter tends to rotate the upper half and they don't fire their arms till late. They actually rotate the upper body here. We don't want to do that. That's where the difference is in the golf swing as opposed to baseball swing. We don't want to do that. We want to keep the shoulders closed and, and fire out there. And really, I think a baseball batter could improve their efficiency. What do I know about baseball? Well, I know a lot about anatomical application in sports per se, because I've taught that my whole life. But, and the dynamics of such. But I, I think a baseball batter could be much more efficient if he kept the shoulders closed and got the arms extending. 
rather than keeping the arms here and moving the shoulders as a propulsion mechanism. But that's another story. So guys, what we want to do and what we want to feel and what we want to look like is this. We want to get here. We want to take it into here. And feel like that this trail hip, guys, is going there. There, like that. So we're really getting behind the ball, just away from the ball. Okay, here. That's what we need to do. We need to get that coil going, guys. That real big coil in the um, in the backswing. Here. We need to be here. There. And then on the downswing, it's fire down there, and that lead knee is going to butter it back. Now, if you want to straighten your lead knee, that's okay. I actually do it a lot myself, unwittingly. I don't want to, but occasionally I do it because the force is so great. So that's what we want to do, and that's what we want to look like. So it's a, it's two forces, one here firing down and staying here, and one firing back into it. It's like the the, the, the two channels of the river are meeting. I don't know what you call that. I don't know what you call that. Now guys, to, to make it a little easier to coil into that trail side, if you, if you just flare that trail foot out. Now again, every time I get here like that, if I get in this position here, and watch, if I trail that, uh, flare that foot, it looks like the ball's come forward a foot, but it hasn't moved. All that's happened is the trail foot has flared out to give the, the hip joint and the hip extensors a little bit more um, help in making that, that trail hip turn. So for me, with my lack of flexibility in the hip extensors and my age, for me, I, I really need to flare that trail foot out. And sometimes I feel a blockage in my golf swing, guys, and it's because I get that trail foot too, too straight on. I've got to, got to get it flared out. Okay, so here we want to be. Here, we just want to trial. We want to preload. Want to turn it in here. And stay back. Got first hit of the day, guys. It's just a bullet. Absolute bullet. First hit of the day. And I've been in the gym for two and a half hours. Not working out for two and a half hours, but just helping some guys out. My workout's about 45 minutes, but it's held a skelter. Rest periods in between reps is only 30 seconds. The most I'll have is about 45 seconds. Okay, it's hard. So here we are, in here, laying into, feeling into that trail side. This is actually preloaded here. A little bit of uh, precock, flare out here. And look at this guys, look. <laughs> I just call that a drive back. I'm driving back here. Why do I want to drive back so my arms can drive forward? No one is there, no one of any uh, quality of or level of play has ever swung the golf club like that. Not that I'm saying that I'm any player of level of quality, but I get by. But I can hit some good quality shots. But these are good quality shots. Now, now, what you have to do, guys, if you're going to stay back here, you've got to be really forceful in firing the arms out. Here. And you've got to keep the shoulders closed and keep the left shoulder high. You've just got to do that. So here we are. Yeah, flare that foot a little bit, JH. Precock. Turn that trail hip. And just fire it away. Guys, if I could stay here forever, in that position, I'd love to be there. Because that's a brilliant golf shot. There's no movement on it. None. Absolutely zip. The ball has no deviation. It just goes dead straight. And I look like a high handicap player, don't I? Well, you can win some money if you look like that on the practice tee because people will say, this, this guy's uh, easy meat. I'll just nail this guy really easy. 
and then when you go out, as Mo Norman said, they look at my swing. And uh, I look like an easy beat, he said, but then when I go out on the golf course and they see that unbelievable ball flight, uh, they go into uh, to mental spasms. So here we are, guys. We're going to load here. Yeah, we're going to push that out a little bit. We're going to get that trail leg back, preload, get in here, and we're going to stay there. Here we are, guys. Hit a few shots like that. Okay, this is an extreme drill. But as I say, I would be quite happy to hit shots like that, play like that, have a golf swing that looked like that. Why wouldn't I? They're perfect golf shots. They are perfect golf shots. I don't need anything else in a golf swing other than that. And that is no exaggeration. They are perfect golf shots. Now what you have to do, guys, if you're going to stay back there, is keep your five o'clock nose. Now what helps me stay back there, and this is a little bit of a difference of setup and feel and application. Uh, Bill Phillips says that with his own golf swing, when he gets in here too much, it plays helter skelter with his golf swing. And he feels like he needs to go a little bit more that way. Now that's okay if that suits your golf swing. For me, it's a complete opposite. For me, guys, if I don't get in there as much as I can, which is close and rearwards in the channel, my ball striking goes off dramatically because I get too sideways. I don't get enough beside my body. But that's just a personal anatomical um, application differential okay I don't know what the camera's like my camera's playing up guys so I've just got to do this a bit quicker than normal okay so get here turn that out get that trail foot in uh, trail hip bent and stay back look at this guys look <laughs> looks like Johnny the Hacker they're not Johnny the Hacker shots I could tell you they are not Johnny the Hacker shots they're really good shots all I need to do there is, is uh, concentrate a little bit more on the uh, on the uh, five o'clock nose. Okay, turn that out, Jase. Preload. Every one of those in the exact same place. All right, now, how would the swing work? Okay, that's drilling it, but how would I put that into in a normal operation of a, of a hit? on the golf course. It wouldn't be that extreme, it'd look more like this. I never want to hit it better than that. I never want to hit the ball better than that. And that is an extreme rearwards action guy. There's no sideways in that. But that's just for me. If I don't get in the channel, I don't get my shoulders closed early enough in the backswing. Now that's just a key for me. Doesn't mean that uh, what, what Bill Phillips does is perfectly acceptable and works great for him. But for me, I have to get in the channel a lot earlier. All right, we'll just hit one more and then I'll hit a driver. They're perfect golf shots. I mean, I mean, perfect golf shots. Flare that foot jet, preload, So I'm sitting down on my trail leg, guys. See that? Just sitting down on that trail leg. Pushing back off the front leg. It's a bit of Da Vinci code in this, guys. It's like a sling away. And they're really good shots. All right, normal golf swing. That's the one I want. And that's about as much drive back as I want. That'll do me. That's as good as old JH can hit it, guys. That's as good as I can hit it. Looks ungainly, doesn't it? I bet you'd like to look, if you could see that ball flight, you'd say, I want to be that ungainly, Jage. I 
I can't hit a better than that. And that's so far. This is a six iron. It's gone so far for me. Warmed up a little bit now. Not stiff. Doing a lot of squats lately, guys. And I'm doing with no weights, but just free body weight. <clears throat> but doing reps of like 75 with what we call ass to the grass. You've got to try and put your bottom on the ground. And that's a lot. You just burn up. It's much better than doing squats with 80 kilos on the bar or something. I just find it so much harder, the higher reps. My legs are really strong right now. I love it. One more and I'll hit a driver. Come on, Josh, nice one. That's the best shot of the, oh, that's the best shot of the year. Come on, just hope that camera's still running. A couple of drivers, Jade. Come on, Jade. Wow, they were good shots, guys. I loved them. Watch this. Watch this. Look at this guy. Look. Still in here, still in here, still in here. Just come down. Is it fire and fall back? Yeah, but not with a normal fire and fall back in a conventional golf swing. Look at this, guys, look. Paralyzingly straight. Paralyzingly straight. Some guys over there on the tee looking over saying, Who's that loony? They're guys that don't know me. They're newbies to the range. But I think they can see the ball flight's good. Watch this, come on, Jason. That's the best drive since I've been on Channel Lock, guys. That's it. I've just hit the best six iron and the best driver since I've been on channel. Okay, let's recap. I want to turn that hip in here, get in here, fire the arms out, drive this back and fire the weight down there. So we got, that's our drive. Drive and fire. Drive and fire. That's really impressive. Just hit one more drive. See if I can get the best drive ever. On channel lock, that was the best one. See if I can get a better one. Watch this. Come on, Jase. Big shoulder turn. There it is, guys. That's the best one since I've been on channel lock. And look at this. Who hits the ball like this? One thing about a locker, when you're a locker, people know you're a locker. People know you're a locker because you look like a locker. Instead of a loony. A loony locker. Donald Mooney and Ireland like that. A loony locker, Do Donald. A loony locker. Watch this. Guys, I can't hit any better than that. And look at this. I'll do more tomorrow on this. And uh, I'll explain a little bit more of it in detail. But basically, it's a weight there. Driving off here. Like the baseball batter, but with extended arms. Here. It's fantastic, guys. I promise you, you just hit it so strong and so solid. Very impressive. I'll do more tomorrow.